Hello church family, hope you're doing well. Hey, sorry if it's a little bit noisy during this video. Uh, it, the, the parking lot outside is being resurfaced, but it probably won't be as noisy for you nor distracting for me as yesterday's video where Derek actually made the video while one of his twins was crying in the background. I, it amazes me, brother, that you were able to still make the video and be thinking the thoughts you needed to think and share those thoughts that you needed to share, regardless of what was going on around you. So well done. And if you didn't watch what the video and look at what Derek had to, to share, I encourage you to do that. So yeah, here we are in John chapter six, and I forgot about what an amazing chapter John six is. It's quite a long chapter. You know, it was uh, what 70 verses, 71 verses, quite a few verses. And so here we have something that we saw in Matthew, right? Jesus feeding the 5,000. And to me, it's, it's hilarious how it starts out that, that Jesus tests Philip. It says that he tests him because he knows what he's going to do. But he asked Philip, nonetheless, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? I think this shows, Philip's response shows that the disciples didn't get it. They had seen what Jesus could do. And their attitude was, yep, he could do these miraculous things. But surely not everything. Surely not this. Surely not make food enough for everyone. Or at least, uh, you know, not out of thin air. But then Andrew comes and says, well, we've got this, this boy with this fish and, and, uh, and these loaves, but that's not going to be enough for everybody. And so they weren't thinking along the lines of, oh man, this is a real need, but we've got Jesus with us. And I'm pretty sure if he wants to, he can take care of this. So you would have thought that maybe at this point, you know, maybe other points along the way, the disciples would say, Jesus, would, do you want to do this or do you want to do this? But they, it's, they never did that. It was always, hmm, what are we going to do? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it, it's, it's interesting. Um, now, I want to point out that verse 14, uh, it, the people after Jesus feeds them, they think that, wow, this must have been the Messiah. And they want to make him king by force. Now, this seems to indicate what my commentary says, and I agree with it. So I'm just going to read you what the commentary says. It says, these comments from the people coming right after Jesus healed and fed them indicates that the people desired a Messiah who met their physical rather than their spiritual needs. They wanted an earthly political Messiah to meet all their needs and to deliver them from Roman oppression. This, their reaction typifies many who want a Christ who makes no demands of them, but of whom they can make their selfish personal requests. I, I think that's so true. You know, right then, they were all excited about what Jesus could do for them. You know, and so he's got to be the Messiah, the one that's going to make all my wildest dreams come true, that's going to kick Rome out, and we're going to have abundance of things and, and never be in want. And so they wanted to make Jesus that Messiah. But he wasn't that Messiah. He was a much more important Messiah, right? He is still today a much more important Messiah. And so many people miss it because they don't get it. They just don't get it. And so here the people were going to be like his soldiers. They were going to make him king by force. Later on, a little bit later, when Jesus uh, is, he withdraws. His disciples go across the lake to Capernaum. And the people realize, oh, only one boat went. Jesus wasn't on it. So he's got to be around here somewhere. And so they're searching for him like paparazzi. It's so funny that they're searching for, every, for him everywhere. And then they can't find him. And they finally get into the boats and go to Capernaum in search of Jesus. They're just like, they're like the first paparazzi, just searching for him high and low, wanting him. Um, also, I wanted to point out that there's a miracle here in verse 21, that when Jesus got into the boat with the disciples, when he walked on water three or four miles to them, that his boat all of a sudden was at the shore of that, the land they were heading to. 
Uh, that's a miracle that's easy to miss in here. So I was pointing that out. Hopefully you didn't miss that. Um, also wanted to point out verse 28. Then they asked him, what must we do to do? What must we do to do the works of God requires? 29 verse, verse 29 says, Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one who he has sent. And this is just so good. I mean, over and over again. John says, we need to believe in Jesus. Jesus came that you would believe in him and have life. And that's the work of God to do that. So when people before Jesus are saying, you know, I really, I've got to fix my life. I've got to clean, clean my, myself up and uh, just really um, just pull myself up by my bootstraps. Um, got to clean myself up for God. No, that's not at all what God wants. The work that they're talking about, the work has already been accomplished. The work that they need to do is simply to believe. That's the work of God, to believe in the one that he has sent. And I love that. Wanted to point out verse 35 when Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Well, Jesus goes on, right, in verse 53 to talk about how his flesh must be consumed. His blood must be consumed. And that is the way to life. Now, of course, Jesus wasn't talking physical, literal, but they took it that way. And so, verse 66 says, that from that time on, many of his disciples turned their back and no longer followed him. So now the people are paparazzi. They're not soldiers. They're deserters because of this hard teaching of Jesus's. And notice that this is crazy to me. Notice that this is chapter 6, verse 66. So 666 6, 6 says this. From this time on, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. I, I just, I don't know if that's connected to uh, what we um, know as the, as the devil's number, you know, 666, but that is interesting to me. Um, and then Simon Peter in verse 68 wanted to point that out. He says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. But he says that because Jesus says, you want to lead too? And that I feel the same way as Simon Peter. When I get frustrated, when I get down, when I look around, and I see everything going on in the world. Sometimes I wonder, you know, God, what's going on? Why is this happening? Why are you allowing this? Where are you? And my and doubt starts to creep in. I oftentimes will extinguish that doubt with, well, what else am I going to believe? Who else am I going to look to? What other answers are there? What else makes sense? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. It makes no sense to believe in anything else. And I love this gospel, and it helps us to believe so well, doesn't it? I hope you're encouraged, brothers and sisters. God bless you. See you tomorrow.